Welcome to the teaching content for Woolen Spinning. This is Spinning Across the Top. My name is Rachel and I can be found pretty much everywhere as well for pearls. And this is brought to you by our Patreon subscribers. Today I'm just using some comb top that I have from a local dyer. I took the top and I actually stripped it down in half vertically. So this is half of the comb top that I originally had in the braid. The reason why I did this is because it's a wonderful way to start learning how to spin across the top. So what we're going to be doing for those who don't know is those fuzzy bits uh, that are at the top of the comb top there, we're actually going to be moving from one side across to the other and back again. So this is called spinning across the top. I'm going to be using short forward draw and I'm going to be spinning quite slowly uh, for, for me. So my feet are going very, very slowly. I have a big whirl on my wheel. So I'm using the biggest pulley that I can, the biggest roundest whirl that I can to keep my wheel going slowly and to keep that twist from building up and entering my fiber supply. So spinning across the top is based, is a technique that many spinners like to use because it doesn't interfere with the original colorway of the hand dyed fiber. It keeps the original colorway intact. So if you really love the colorway of that hand painted braid of fiber that's in your stash and you want to keep it intact, this is a great way to do that. I wouldn't recommend using your most special um, braid of fiber for the first time that you are going to spin across the top. I would use something that you don't mind if it comes out a little bit inconsistent and a little bit thick and thin because this is a great opportunity to practice something new and it does take practice. It takes a lot of practice. <laughs> so you can see that my hands are slowly moving across the top from one side to the other. I'm using my other hand, my fiber supply hand. So that's the hand that's on the furthest away from the orifice of the wheel to direct and drive where my drafting hand, which is the hand closest to the orifice of the wheel, is drawing from. So you can use your thumb for this, you can use your whole hand around the entire fiber supply, but basically you're using that other hand to drive where you're drawing from. And you're the boss, so you need to show your drafting hand where it needs to go next. And that's where it takes practice. Part of the reason why you need to keep your feet really slow when you're first learning how to do this is if the twist builds up in that drafting hand and pushes past into your fiber supply, it's very difficult then to drive where you're going and where you can draw out. So there's a nap there in my singles and I decided to pull it out right away. I used my middle finger to anchor my singles so that I could pull it off with while keeping the singles underneath intact. And then I'm off again. So you see that my thumb in my fiber supply hand is directing where my hand is drawing from. And then it'll start to move over and my fiber and my drafting hand will follow suit. Now there's a couple of different ways to spin across the top. You notice that I just flipped the fiber over. If you find, especially as you're learning this technique, that drawing across the top is the easiest going in one direction. So maybe for you that's going from right to left, which it is for me. Maybe if you are left-handed, you'll find that going from left to right is easiest. Flipping your fiber supply over means that you can then continue working in the same direction. You never, you, do, you won't have to actually learn how to go the other way because you'll find now as I move from left to right, which isn't as easy for me, that I'm definitely moving a little bit slower. And that fiber supply hand has to work a little bit harder to help my drafting hand figure out where to go next. So that thumb in my fiber supply hand really has to help to guide where those fibers need to be drawn from next. And you'll see that I'm moving that thumb quite a bit to help draw, to help my drafting hand know where to draw those fibers from. The other thing too is my wrist moves and bends to help that fiber to help basically help offer that fiber to my drafting hand that I want it to draw from. Now, some people think that spinning across the top should be really quick and that every time you reach back into your fiber supply, you should be moving 
across and moving across your top quite quickly. But you'll find that actually you're, you're sort of sitting in one spot quite a bit. And it's because there's quite a bit of fiber in each spot and you have to draw all of that fiber forward before you're going to move over. The finer you spin, obviously, the more you're going to be in one spot. So there again, my thumb is directing where I'm drawing from. Now you can use different techniques like spreading the fiber up apart in your fiber supply hand to help those fibers come apart and help that drafting hand pull forward. Now you'll see that I've ended up with a little bit of fiber left over on that one side so I'm going to spend some time just spinning in that area to use up that fiber and to turn that fiber into yarn and then I'll start to move across again. Now there's a nap again, so I'm going to anchor it with my middle hand and remove it, keeping the underlying single intact. This is a great technique to remove naps that you don't want because it keeps the single underneath. Uh, it keeps the integrity of the yarn. So when you don't anchor the yarn at all and you're just pulling at the yarn, it, it pulls all of the yarn apart. So if you anchor it, you will preserve the integrity of the single. Now I'm going to draw back off my bobbin here and I'm going to do a ply back test just to make sure that I'm achieving the yarn that I want and I am. I absolutely love this yarn. I love this prep. This fiber that I'm spinning right now I'm just absolutely in love with it. It's been a while since I've had a spin on the wheel that I've been so obsessed with and now I'm going to keep on going. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you again to those who are Patreon subscribers of the show. I really appreciate your ongoing support. You're the ones that keep the show on the road, on the air week to week, and you're also the ones that help me to produce this content. For those who are interested in learning more, you can head to patreon.com slash Pearls. Until next month, happy spinning. Bye, guys.